All right, I'm exploring Pop OS 2204 today. This is the beta version. We're gonna check out what's new in this wonderful Linux operating system that I highly suggest to most newcomers. Let's see what's new with 2204. First off, we'll check the onboarding process. As you can see, you have options for setting no dock, a dock with edges, and a dock without edges. These are all options that you get right away. You can configure your top bar with workspaces or applications. You get shown how to use that useful launcher and a quick mention of gestures for easier navigation. And then we choose between a light or dark theme. The dark theme is defaulted. Check your privacy and finally enter in a time zone. Connect any external accounts and you're on your way to using Pop OS 22.04. I'll mention that the installer has changed ever so slightly. Not much new there, but let's get going by checking out the desktop environment, diving into the settings, and looking at the GNOME version, we have been updated to GNOME version 42. So with that comes some updated GTK applications. And in particular, one that I know about is the screenshot tool. So let's see what the screenshot tool looks like. If you just search for screen in the search, take a screenshot. And now you have this more modern screenshot tool available to you directly. This comes with GNOME 42 as one of the updated applications. Notice that you can move this around anywhere on the screen, select whatever portion of the screen that you want to take a picture of, or you can get the entire screen or a particular window that's currently open. You can also select between recording the screen or just taking a picture, hit this button to take a picture, and finally show or don't show your pointer with the click. If you go over the screenshot menu and take a picture, the screenshot will be captured. And once you view that picture, you won't actually see the GUI. It's intelligent enough to get rid of the menu and hide it whenever taking pictures. As far as the desktop goes, not much has changed here, but we'll go through it anyway for those of you unfamiliar with Pop OS's layout of the cosmic desktop, as they call it. Let's first start out in the top left with workspaces. You can view your various different workspaces that you currently have open. Applications gets you all your applications, which you can actually scroll through left and right. It's this panel right here in the center of the screen. They do this a little bit differently than what you get standard with GNOME, so expect this. You can search for things up top. So if you're searching for settings, you just type it in, you'll find it. Hitting escape gets out of anything and everything that's currently open. You can also select between office, system, utilities, and create a brand new folder where you can place, drag and drop various different programs, utilities, tools, what have you. But library home is the default location that it starts out in whenever opening applications. The default web browser here is still Firefox. Let's see if they change anything up with the pop shop. This has remained the same. Nothing new to see here. You search, install, and use the same repositories as before. In the top middle of the screen, we have the current date and time. And if clicked on, you can turn on and off notifications, as well as look at the calendar and any events that you have for the day. Moving over to the right-hand side, we have their tiling window manager, which allows you to turn on and off the feature to tile windows. I've gone in depth in the past about this. You can check out some of my other videos. I'll post them in the description below if you're interested. But pretty much all of this has remained the same, but you can change the active hint color if you want to whatever you want. Now this doesn't change accent colors, which I really wish it did, but you can select whatever you want and just hit select. And now active hint colors will be in this color. I'm not sure that they had that in the last one. Maybe they did. In the top right hand corner, we have volume control as usual, a wired or wireless connection settings, regular settings, locking the screen, powering off, restarting or logging out of the current session. And then in the bottom, as I have it set up right now, a dock that shows up with their launcher, which is one of my favorite tools here to use in Pop! OS. I really wish more operating systems would add this to their own tool collection because you can search for anything just like dock here for the bottom dock. Make sure you check this out. It's in desktop settings. Under dock, you can change the look and feel of this at the bottom here and even move it around the screen if you don't like where it's currently located. A great place to go to is these desktop settings because you have a lot of choices to make about the appearance of your background, dock workspaces, and desktop environment in general. Moving on, we have show workspaces, same thing as if you're clicking on the top left. You have show applications, same thing again if you're clicking up in the top left, brings up the same deal. Now since this is the beta version, I have had some issues with freezing. This is a typical of Pop! OS and everything will be cleaned up by the end of the month, which I assume is their official release. Files gets you the file browser. Then you have the terminal, the pop shop, and finally settings. The settings has remained the same. Not much has changed there. 
And if you right click, you can create a new folder, select all, arrange your icons, show the desktop and files, open a terminal from this location, change the background, desktop icon settings, or display settings. Desktop icon settings is always a great place to start so you can change up how the desktop looks and feels. And if you're interested in learning more about Linux today, check out my Linux checklist and cheat sheet at learn.savvynick.com. There's a link below. We'll move right along and check out the resource usage here with HTOP. We have the CPU running between zero and 3%. Memory is at 1.45 gigabytes out of eight gigs. No swap being used, 108 tasks, 249 threads running, and we've been up for only eight minutes. Now, something that may surprise you here is how much memory that's being taken up by the operating system. This seems to be due to GNOME 42, at least across the board where I've seen GNOME 42 being applied to distributions. I've seen a pretty dramatic uptick in the memory usage. Not sure what's going on there, but I've seen about the same across about four distributions now. Whereas before I would have said they were on the lighter hand side with this modern desktop environment at around 800, 850 megabytes out of the eight gigs. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Now let's check out the system settings through NeoFetch. This is Pop OS 22.04, the long-term support edition, running on kernel 5.16. There are 1,748 source packages. It's running Bash 5.1. Desktop environment, GNOME 42 what seems to have beta behind it. That's probably because they've made their own tweaks here to GNOME 42. The window manager is Mutter, window manager theme pop. So a custom theme, pop dark with pop icons. This is being emulated on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X series with 1.5 gigs of memory being used up out of eight gigs. Now there aren't a ton of updates here in Pop OS 22.04, the long-term support edition, but I am excited to see development being done on Pop OS's Cosmic Desktop that's going to be based on Rust. They have made decent progress on this, and I've shown off some of that progress in a previous video. I'll put a link in the description below. You'll definitely want to check this out if you're a Pop OS fan. I actually build their projects from source and use a few applications as well as check out their modified settings so we can get a feel for what Cosmic Desktop will bring to us in the future. We're probably looking at about a year out before we actually get anything from that Rust developed desktop environment. But I'm always super excited to see an updated Pop OS image. Let me know what you think about this current version in the comments section below. Are you gonna make the switch? Or are you gonna update to the long-term support edition if you're not already from an older edition? As we see more development in the next few weeks, I'll make sure to post about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.